following presentation of the Daily Mass is made possible by your generous donations to Catholic Television of San Antonio. The Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, listening to God's Word, and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. gathered today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we gather today, I'm going to be heading to Victoria, Texas for the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament's um, Jubilee. Those sisters have served here for how long? Long, long time. Long, long time. I ran into two of them at um, OPH, and one of them is having their 60th Jubilee. So the my intention for this Mass, your intention can be whatever you want it to be, is going to be for Sister Clementine, for the other jubilarians, and for their community as they work at um, resetting themselves for this new church that we're in. As we begin together today, let us pause, realizing to enter the celebration with open hearts and minds, the best way we can do that is to ask forgiveness for our sins and let God cleanse us so that we can begin free of our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to show each of us the way to your Father's house. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through your cross, you shattered the chains of sin and death. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave one origin to all peoples and willed to gather from them one family for yourself, fill our hearts, we pray, with the fire of your love and kindle in them a desire for the just advancement of their neighbor, that through the good things which you richly bestow upon all, each human person may be brought to the perfection, every division may be removed, and equity and justice may be established in human society. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob gave his sons this charge. Since I am about to be taken to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that lies in the field of Ephron the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah, facing on Mamre in the land of Canaan, the field that Abraham brought from, the, from Ephron the Hittite for a burial ground. There, Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried. And so are Isaac and his wife, Rebekah. And there too I bury Leah, the field and the cave in it that had been purchased from the Hittites. Now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers came fearful and thought, suppose Joseph has been nursing a grudge against us and now plans to pay us back in full for all the wrong we did to him. So they approached Joseph and said, before your father died, he gave us these instructions. You shall say to Joseph, 
Jacob begs you to forgive the criminal wrongdoing of your brothers who treated you so cruelly. Please, therefore, forgive the crime that we the servants of your father's God committed. When they spoke these words to him, Joseph broke into tears. Then his brothers proceeded to fling themselves down before him and said, let us be your slaves. But Joseph replied to them, have no fear. Can I take the place of God? Even though you meant harm to me, God meant it for good. To achieve his present end, the survival of many people. Therefore, have no fear. I will provide for you and for your children. By thus speaking kindly to them, he reassured them. Joseph remained in Egypt together with his father's family. He lived 110 years. He saw Ephraim's children to the third generation and the children of Manasseh's son, Makur, were also born on Joseph's knee. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die. God will surely take care of you and lead you out of this land to the land that he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then, putting the sons of Israel under oath, he continued, When God thus takes care of you, you must bring my bones up with you from this place. Joseph died at the age of 110. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, be glad, you lowly ones, may your hearts be glad. Be glad, you lowly ones, may your hearts be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Your descendants of Abram, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If you're insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, No disciple is above their teacher, no slave above their master. It is is enough for the disciple that he becomes like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household? Therefore, Do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim to the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the ones who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. 
Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the heart, even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I love the Joseph story. And I can't remember if I've said this before, but if you're looking for something to do, there has to be on YouTube or somewhere on Netflix or any of those things, a recording of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor raincoat. And it's just a great musical. If you can go see it in person, it hasn't been here in a long time. But if you can go see it in person, it's fun, it's short, it's just a modern day narrator telling the story. And for me, what sticks out is in the midst of all the ickiness happening in our world, all the bad things that are happening, we can look at this Joseph story, remembering what the gospel said, that God knows everything. God is here. God is present. We get that part, but we forget it a lot. We get that part in our brains, but we lose it in our everyday stuff. And we realize all the bad stuff that happened to Joseph. First, his brothers wanted to kill him. Luckily, they were talked out of that. Then his brothers sold him into slavery. Then he gets thrown in jail. And this story, and because of his ability to interpret dreams, because of his ability to trust and work with God, he ends up in this very powerful position. And his family ends up coming back to him, and they have this reunion. He puts him through a little bit of a test. And the realization in today's story that through all of this, he realized God was working. If my siblings had sold me into slavery, I would have been a lot more obnoxious with them than he had been. He realized how God was working through him. And maybe the story was cleansed a little bit in the telling, but if we were to look, and despite the bad things that happened to us and happened in our world, and just ask the question, how is God working through this? Where is God present? How do we make this right? Not in our own words, not in the sense of what's going on in this world, but right as it aligns with the gospel. And if we can figure out how to get ourselves aligned with the gospel, then no matter what happens to us, we can say, okay, I, God can help me in this way. God can be present here. I can make the kingdom of God known. I can work at building the body of Christ by just taking this bad stuff and making God's presence known, by following God's will, by not being distracted from all these things. What if Joseph just go, fine, I'm just going to be a miserable slave, and didn't keep doing that? That would have been the end of the story. How many times do we give up? How many times do we just say it's not worth it anymore? How many times do we not fully give ourselves to what God wants from us, and we lose that ability to allow God to work through us. Bad things are going to happen. We know that. We have tons of proof for that. But as soon as we give up, as soon as we try and take it all into our hands, we stop letting God working through us, and we stop that ability of our part in the building of the kingdom of God until we get refocused. So let's look at the things in our life. Let's look at the things that are seemingly unholy and realize God can still be there. God can still work through these events. And where is God calling me to be in this situation, in this mess, in this, excuse me, supposedly awful situation? How do I make it right? And it's probably one of my favorite sentences says, where there is no love, put love, and then, then there will be love. St. John of the Cross. Mindful of the world's need for God, let us bring our prayers to our God. For the church and her mission of discipleship and building God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For government leaders and civil servants, may God bless them with the purity of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who face crippling fear and anxieties, may God bring peace and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this community of faith discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may God's grace and peace be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may God help us witness the fullness of his love to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God's peace be with them as they enter the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. And for all those celebrating anniversaries and jubilees, especially today, for the sisters of the Blessed Sacrament of the Incarnate Word and Victoria, and for another woman, Sister Mary Celeste. She's a Dominican out of Tennessee. She's teaching at St. Vincent de Paul in Denver, where I first started teaching. And when she first met me, I was on a leave of absence, and she said she would pray that I would, that, that I would get back to what God called me to. So for those sisters and for their amazing role that they play in the church and for their continued presence, let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we know that you hear the prayers that we offer this day. Help us as we pray to always be aware of your presence in all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Food of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Food of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Hear, O Lord, in your mercy, the prayers of those who cry out to you, and as you receive your church's offering, grant that all may be filled with the spirit of divine discipleship, so that with inequalities overcome by charity, one family of peoples may be formed in your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst with mighty hand and outstretched arm. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom. Through Christ, your Son, who is our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and will always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And one is one's first disciple, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, have us to your table, Lord. Confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Archbishop, Mike and Gary's auxiliaries, with all bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and with your entire people, as we walk your ways of faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. Have mercy, I'm sorry, of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Pius X, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now can dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I want to stop for another sign of Christ's peace. I think you can do this. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter neither my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Having been fed with the one bread by which you constantly renew the human family, we pray, O oh Lord, that from participation in this sacrament of unity, we may draw a love strong and pure to help peoples in their development and prompted by charity to fulfill what justice requires. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So thanks to Alejandro who reminded me that we can do a different Mass today because this week we've been doing a basement way too much. That worked out, whoever came up with that word in the colic. So uh, thank you, because I didn't want to have to say a basement again. So thank you. As we come together again, remember our Catholic schools um, are there. I was just given some scholarships for my school. I know other schools have other things like that. So please, if you're interested, come see one of us. Thank you to our sponsors. I am just always shocked at how many people say they see this and are thankful for this. So to our sponsors, thank you. If you'd like to be a sponsor, just call CTSA and Yesenia or any of her crew would be happy to help you. Have a great weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news with your lives. Please help this very important ministry by making a contribution to help the televised Mass to continue by sending a donation to Catholic Television of San Antonio, 2718 West Woodlawn, San Antonio, Texas, 78228, or contribute online at ctsa.tv.